Hi there everyone, so in this video we're going to be looking at uh, why I chose the motor and controller setup I did for the bike. Uh, there's a lot of different uh, things I considered when I was looking for uh, the motor and the controller setup I put into the bike and I, I do get asked quite a few questions um, about uh, you know why I didn't go with a brushless motor or an AC motor or you know any, uh, just basically why I chose the motor I chose. So I guess let's go into that. So here's um, a list of some of the setups available out there. Um, there's, I'm sure there's way more than this, but this is just a couple I pulled up. And um, so these are some AC motor kits um, um, that I found. And as you can see, they're all uh, they all have um, um, the same controller actually, uh, but the motors, I guess, each of them are just a little bit different. Um, I think the AC9 and the 12 and the 15 are actually the same dimensionally, uh, but maybe they, they just wire the motor differently for, for different uh, power or speed uh, levels. And then on the right hand side here I have the cost of each of the setups. Um, and so you can see the, the setup I, I ended up choosing down here, the brushed ME1003 with the Altrack 7245. Um, that's one of the least. That's pretty much the least expensive setup on this list. Uh, now, now there is less expensive setups as well out there, um, but albeit with uh, lower power. Okay, so let's go into it. Why did I choose the setup I chose? Well, it basically came down to dimensions, as you can probably figure out. Um, whenever you're working on a motorcycle. Uh, dimensions are always going to be the the leading factor in determining what you can actually put into it. Um, so here, for example, is a, a image of an AC9 motor, and this is the limiting factor for my bike: is this length here. So the motor is spec'd out as being 9.9 uh, .9 inches or so long, and that is just too long for my bike. Um, in order to get the sprocket in the right position for the chain, um, the back end of this motor here uh, would be just hanging out uh, the side of the bike and it would be protruding enough that it would likely interfere um, with the foot peg and the brake operation and all that and, and yeah you definitely <laughs> definitely don't want that so <laughs> yeah so, so this is the AC9 and as you can see it's 9.9 .9 inches long or so so let's take a look at the ME1003. I think I have that somewhere here. So this, this drawing is all in metric, but if you convert this to uh, imperial, that's um, 7.5 inches there. And if if we uh, take a look at an image of my bike, uh, you'll see that this motor is, uh, you know, basically there's not much more room even with this motor as it is with, uh, you know, like I said, this is 7.5 inches long here. So even with this motor being 9.9 .9 inches long, it doesn't sound like it's much longer, um, but that extra two inches there um, is enough to throw it off enough that it would be uh, hanging out the, the end of the bike. And uh, yeah, it, it, it wouldn't look too good. And as well, one thing you have to consider is that uh, not, not just from a purely cosmetic point of view, um, but weight distribution in the bike. If, if you have this motor uh, offset a fair bit because it's so long, um, you're going to have a bunch of mass on towards one side of your motorcycle and it's going to make it handle poorly. Uh, it's going to feel funny. Uh, you might have to somehow design in uh, the battery racks or something else like that to offset the, some more weight to the other side to kind of keep it well balanced. And, and yeah, it, it just didn't play well with my motorcycle. So, so really, the main reason why I chose the motor I did here, the ME1003, is because it was the biggest motor I could find with the most power handling capability that would still fit in my motorcycle um, easily. Um, and I, I did look at all these other setups here, like the, uh, so that was the AC9 I showed you an image of. Let's look at, um, I think this is the... AC15. I think this might have the same dimensions. Let's see here. Let's see if we can find dimensions on this. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so this one's 11 inches long. 
So, so it's even longer, and, and that would just make it hang out even more. And another thing too is if you look at this uh, spreadsheet I have going here, uh, the AC9, um, it's really a wimpy setup, uh, comparatively at least to what I have now. Uh, it can only really handle about 18 horsepower. Um, and and also these are just numbers I pulled off of uh, some random website, so they're not super reliable or anything. Uh, this is just their claimed mechanical power. This isn't really uh, this isn't like a true figure or anything. It's just a claimed mechanical power. So I'm not, not actually sure where the, they get this number from. But all right, so at second look here, this is actually where they get the the horsepower figure from. They actually get it legitimately from this uh, torque curve they made here, this torque horsepower uh, curve. And so this is them driving the motor with uh, a 650 amp motor controller. And the you can see the horsepower here pe peaks at about 18 horsepower. So that is actually a legitimate number. They, they didn't just make that up out of thin air, uh, which is, which is good. nice. <laughs> and one thing you'll notice is that I have all the powers for the AC controllers written in KVA. Um, because of course with with anything AC there's also a power factor associated with that and 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 so there's a there's a conversion factor there depending on how the motor is loaded and, and tons of factors that will determine the actual power factor of the motor and and how much real power is is being delivered to the motor will um, will, will be different from that figure there um, but as you can see that of course the DC controller is just plain old kilowatts uh, so what else? So I guess when I was choosing this motor, um, my main concern was dimensions. Dimensionally, I wanted it to fit uh, into the motorcycle comfortably without, you know, uh, having to make any kind of frame modifications or anything like that. Uh, but of course, if you look at this list, you can see that the cost um, associated with the AC systems is quite a bit higher. And uh, I guess the advantage of the AC systems is that since they are brushless, they in theory, they are lower maintenance, um, but the reason why they're more expensive is because the mo the controller, uh, the controllers are quite a bit more complicated uh, to manufacture and design, and they got a lot more software that runs on them, and they're just a lot more complicated because they have to produce that uh, three phase AC waveform there that that drives these motors. So there's there's a lot more complexity in them, and in that sense, there's also a lot more that can uh, could go wrong with them. Um, so the the longer reliability uh, aspect of it uh, is a bit difficult to actually determine, to be honest. Um, whereas with the brush setup, it's just the controller is so simple, um, and and the motor too is so simple that uh, there's really nothing to it, and that that's why the cost is is so much lower. And, and as you can see, the um, like I said, these are the claimed mechanical power, so it's, it's really hard to say if this is actually more powerful than this. Um, it, it's really difficult to say. I, I, I can't say because I, I just don't know. But um, what, what I can say is that the AC setups should, should in theory, be, uh, be better because the, um, in terms of power handling and all that because, of course, with the brush setup, your timing, I guess you could say, your your brush timing, uh, is fixed, whereas with the AC setups, it's it's variable, of course, because that's all handled by the controller. So any kind of uh, advancement of uh, you know you know how I, I don't know if any of you have heard of the term of advancing brushes, where uh, the brushes uh, can be offset a little bit to uh, provide uh, more top speed uh, or or more torque. Uh, depending on which way you set it, um, and with a brush setup, of course, that that's fixed. But with a uh, an AC setup, of course, that's all controlled uh, by the controller. So that that's why uh, typically the the torque curves and the power curves of the AC setups are wider and better. Is just because uh, the controller can take care of uh, all that and it can it can vary it on the fly. Whereas the the brush setup is is fixed. Um, as far as efficiency goes. There's actually not a whole lot of difference in efficiency between any of these setups. Uh, they're all very efficient. Uh, we're talking, you know, above 90% efficient for for almost all of these setups here. So there's not a whole lot in that, to be honest. Uh, it's not like the it's not like the AC setups are just like just because they're brushless, they're all of a sudden a whole ton a whole 
whole ton more efficient. Uh, it, re it really doesn't go that way. It, it's, uh, it really depends on the setup and, and just there's so many factors there to, to take into consideration that I, there's just no way I could go over them all. Um, so yeah, so that, so the main reason why I chose the motor I chose was due to dimensions. One more thing that I haven't mentioned yet actually is gearing. Uh, so these AC motor setups typically run at much higher RPM. So it would have been a, a big, big challenge to uh, gear the bike properly. So as you can see, this chart here ends at about 7,000 RPM. So uh, with the current gearing on my bike, um, uh, the bike would be geared to go about uh, 200 kilometers an hour and in order to you know gear that down to something reasonable maybe 120 130 kilometers an hour I would have needed a pretty extreme gearing setup uh, in order to accomplish that so that's another thing to consider is, is just the physical actual gearing uh, gearing of the motor to the rear wheel and, and what kind of uh, transmission you have or, or reduction you're using uh, something you really have to consider with these with these high speed AC motors is that 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 RPM is a lot higher, so you're going to have to gear that down a lot more t in order to make uh, any of that power usable. So those are some of the reasons why I chose the ME-1003 motor. Uh, really, in the end, there is no right or wrong choice for your particular project. It's it's all about your design requirements, and you know the process of you going through and and weighing all the pros and cons of each design choice and at the end of the day as the designer you get to weigh those choices and select what you think is best for your particular project and that's exactly what I did and I came to the conclusion that this motor was the best for my project and I have to say that man I'm, I'm really impressed with this motor and it really is the best thing that could have uh, been selected for my bike it, it fits perfectly in there it's got lots of power, it's really durable, it's efficient, it's simple, it's just uh, the perfect thing I could have put in there. And, uh, you know, as far as performance goes, I'm not disappointed at all. It's just, it's an excellent motor, it's got plenty of torque, plenty of power, tons of fun. So in any case, um, I'll, uh, I got more videos coming for you as always. Uh, the next one's actually, uh, I guess I'm not going to reveal it quite yet. But you'll see it as it comes, and I'll have more stuff for you, so keep watching and enjoy. Till next time.